Good morning, creatures. Uh, this is Sidiso um, Mputi speaking. Uh, we are here to share and discuss geography. And we thought today we should just focus on the topic of uh, subtropical anticyclones and resultant weather over uh, our country, which is South Africa. Remember, as we prepare for the examination, uh, this is one of the topics that we should be able to master as we prepare ourselves for the examination. Then me not waste uh, too much time. Let me just get through and uh, start with our, our, our work. Now, grade 12, I think in grade 11, you did study uh, factors influencing climate. That was a part of your studies in your, in your, in your climatology. Remember we said, Ocean currents have got an influence in, in, in climate. And then we also have uh, altitude of the plateau influencing the climate of South Africa. And we also have high pressure systems. Remember, location for our country is uh, found in a region of a high pressure belt. So you'd have three high pressure systems that have uh, a huge, huge impact on the climate of our country. You, you know them most, it's the South Atlantic anticyclone. Remember why we call these high pressure cells anticyclones? It's because they have their circulation, the circulation of air is anticlockwise in the Southern Hemisphere. So you have these three high pressure cells, South Atlantic high anticyclone, South Indian anticyclone, and the Karalahari anticyclone. Now, let us start with the ocean currents. Remember, on the eastern side of our country, we have a warm current, which is the Mozambique current. Then how does this influence our climate? It says, then on the eastern side, we have a warm current. The result is we have warmer temp temperatures on the east coast of our country. And as a result, again, you have higher rainfall on the eastern side of our country. But in contrast to that, if you look on the western side, you would notice that on the western side, you have a cold current, which is the cold Benguela current. What are the effects thereof? Then it says to us, on the western side, you have lower temperatures, and the result is you have low rainfall. So we are saying the climate of South Africa, in terms of rainfall, is also influenced by the ocean currents. Now, the other important thing is that you look, your rainfall, on the eastern side of our country, you have more rainfall, and on the western side of our country, you have little rainfall. That is why you'll find that most of the settlements that you have in our country are found on the eastern part of our country. That is one factor. Now let's move on to the other factor. We say it's altitude of the plateau. Remember, uh, because of the Kalahari high pressure cell, you'd have different conditions because it says you'd have layers that block moist air from reaching the interior in winter. If you look on the the picture on, on, on your left, you'd see that is winter conditions. I want you to notice one thing that the Kalahari high pressure cell is dominant and there's strong subsidence, the strong w w air going down in terms of subsidence. That's what we're trying to say, the strong air going down. And then there's that inversion layer that you'll have in winter. And then what are the results of this condition in winter? It says the layer blocks warm air from reaching the interior. What blocks warm air from reaching the interior? the inversion layer. So remember, this warm air should be coming from the eastern part of our country into, uh, uh, into the country. And then the result is that over South Africa in winter, we have dry winters, we have no rain, we have clear skies, we have warm days, and we have extremely cold nights. Remember, if we don't have cloud cover, your nights are going to be very, very cold. Hence the term, remember we have the term sunny South Africa. It comes from this statement, 
the statement number three that in our country in winter over the interior we don't have clouds no rain clear skies but the contrast happens in summer look at summer you'd notice that now the kalahari is not strong in summer and then you have advection of warm air into the atmosphere and the inversion layer has moved from its position and it is uh, higher up then the result thereof is that you have moist air coming in the, and then you have rain that is why you have rain in summer over the country now if you look at the notes that are written there they tell you that during summer the land is hot and the air rises the sinking air of the kalahari cell is weaker that is why it, it the air is able to rise because the cell is weakened by uh, warm air that is rising now the inversion layer is above the escarpment and warm air moist air is able to get over into the interior this will result in summer rainfall over the interior now remember great tools what you need to know here again is how does this the winter condition how do they impact on farming over the country and how do, how do summer con conditions have an impact over the country? Remember, that's where we're going to say in winter we have less rainfall. Uh, in winter we have more frost days. Crops will be, uh, that are not really, uh, that cannot survive. Frost will die. There's going to be shortage of water uh, over the country. And then in summer we have rainfall. But at the same time, the rainfall can bring floods, which, which is also a negative but the positive in summer will be you'd have uh, irrigation water that is available for irrigation let's move on and look at the high pressure systems now remember over the country we have three high pressure systems now look at them you see on your left or over the Atlantic Ocean you have the South Atlantic Anticyclone. Remember, I said anticyclone because movement is anticlockwise. And then you'd have your Kalahari high pressure cell or Kalahari anticyclone over uh, the country. And on the eastern part of our country, over the Indian Ocean, you have the South Atlantic anticyclone. But what is important that we need to know about these two things is that look at the South Indian anticyclone. Like we said earlier on, it advects warm moist air over into the interior of the country and then the south in the south atlantic advects cold air over the interior of our country and then you also have this phenomenon this pressure system that affects our country mostly in winter which is the mid latitude cyclones and then you also have something that is very important grade 12 we are going to talk about it later on the low pressure cell that uh, that that we call the coastal low. This also have has an influence over our climate. Moving on, you'd have there you'd see the position of uh, the high pressure systems uh, on the western and south.